How do we monetize healthcare using blockchain? There are thousands of applications surrounding the multitude of blockchain applications. They all lead back to one cardinal question. How can blockchain technology be monetized for healthcare? Hi, I'm Peter Nickel, healthcare technology executive and leader passionate about digital innovation and blockchain. Today, I'll share my insights on four ways to monetize blockchains for health smart health contracts, universal ledgers for global genomic sequencing, peer-to-peer -peer insurance, and quantified self data standards. First, let's talk about smart contracts. The global pharmaceutical market is 1.06 trillion. Major players include Pfizer, Johnson & Johnson, Humira, and Novartis. The race to anonymously cross-reference enormous amounts of data and dynamic medical data with historical medical records will open up new revenue streams. Revenue streams for drug discovery and personalized medicine. Smart contracts execute obligations under an agreement to which both parties have agreed. Blockchain offers a reliable, stable environment for these contracts, mainly because of blockchain's immutability and cryptographic security strength of the blockchain. This could even be the next generation of EMRs. However, that's just the beginning. The entire office visit could be executed through a distributed application based on that physician visit. This application would seamlessly manage admittance, access to the patient's universal EMR, and validate the patient's identity, including access to the facility. Once the patient was finished with their doctor's appointment, that software would annotate the universal EMR and complete the checkout, including processing the patient's full payments, all while leveraging smart contracts. Web services and daemons have no internal capital. Decentralized application or dApps are the simplest form of a smart contract. Now, a smart contract is an agreement involving digital assets between two parties that get automatically redistributed based on the contract's formula and contract terms defined in the smart contract. Decentralized organizations, or DOs, are composed of a set of property that can be digital and a protocol that defines the rules for that group of individuals. Decentralized autonomous organizations, DAOs, have internal capital that's valuable. Smart contracts may free DAOs from the risk of human components when leveraging blockchain architectures, inching DAOs closer to real artificial intelligence. Second, let's better understand the potential for blockchain to accelerate the universal ledger for global genomic sequencing. Once personal genome sequencing becomes part of the mainstream, the 322 million Americans will need a way to store and secure and access their genomes. We know that individual genomes vary by less than 1% person-to-person -person and can be compressed to roughly 4 megabytes. The human genome contains about 2.9 million base pairs by rough estimation. However, storage in the two-bit representation is totally impractical. Also, when working with genomic data, it's stored and researched by chromosome, not in long data streams. Individual chromosomal data storage can range anywhere from 50 to 300 megabytes based on many variables. To keep things simple, let's just assume the human genome requires about 725 megabytes of storage. Where is this data going to live? And how is it going to be accessed? DNA.bits, founded in 2014, is a cutting edge technology company that solves the challenge of mapping large data sets to clinical data. DNA.bits are also known for, as blockchain for medical data, uses authentication without identification and correlates large populations of genetic samples focusing on HIPAA, genomics, and de-identify continuous sharing of genetic and correlated clinical data. DNA.bits utilizes Bitcoin as a platform and can aggregate data from multiple sources without the need to collect it into a central repository. Third, Dynamis out of Virginia, Inspire based in Paris, PeerCover originating from New Zealand, and Friendshire out of Berlin, Lemonade even out of our own New York, are applying crowdfunding to peer-to-peer -peer insurance. The general concept here is just to make insurance more affordable. Sounds simple enough. Policyholders pool together for coverage, and when there's a claim, they use that pooled money to pay out claims. 
If there are no claims, policy costs decrease. Microinsurance might just unseat large insurance companies over the next few years. Zopa was the first to start peer-to-peer lending in 2004. Zopa applied the sharing economy to lending over a decade ago. Today, new players are applying the sharing economy to personal insurance. At a macro level, there are two keystone benefits for peer-to-peer insurance. The first, pooling of shared risk. And the second, the pooling of shared benefits. Economies of scale help suppress out-of-pocket costs for these policyholders. And insurance companies benefit too because they're carrying smaller risk profiles. As a result, payments for claims are typically minimized. The peer-to-peer insurance model also benefits from the lack of trust between providers and members. Blockchain offers trust between strangers. Users interacting with web servers place trust in a root or administrator, typically. However, as experienced with the Hollywood Presbyterian Medical Center ransomware attack, the VTech data breach, Patreon data breach, and several others, these architectures can be penetrated. Web services do offer a bit more security when they're properly architected, but even these schemes highly depend on trusting an entire computer, a computer network, or the people that have direct administration to that computer. Now, blockchain isn't necessarily a trustless architecture, but it does offer a trust-minimized solution. In this situation, subscribers would trust the code and could still not trust the owner of the computer or even the code. Peer-to-peer insurance that leverages the blockchain decreases policyholders' costs and improves security for the peer network. Fourth, quantified self is going to heat up really big over the next two years. You may be asking yourself, what is quantified self data? Allow me to explain a little bit. Biometrics are integrated into quantified self data. For example, the data in your Fitbit could be accessible through the blockchain. And it could be accessible through a health blockchain. Blockchain presents many opportunities to improve processes and introduce new business models, including decentralized data access, universal electronic medical records or EMRs, protected health digital assets, health tokens, and even DNA wallets. As executives, our challenge is to simplify blockchain's value. Blockchain decentralizes businesses and removes the middleman. Establishing trust in a trustless world. And in healthcare, we could use some more trust. I hope you found today's video insightful. Please stay tuned for future topics. Thanks.